Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to do a UPS battery replacement, um, so stay tuned. What we've got here is a Cyber Power branded UPS and I suspect the battery's gone in it. What's happening is um, it's not holding much charge when you turn the power off to the unit. So in this video we'll work through removing the old battery from the unit, testing the old battery, testing the charge of the UPS, working out the replacement battery needed, fitting the replacement battery, and finally charging the replacement battery and testing the UPS. So to access the battery um, I found on Google um, that this front panel um, comes off and there's two screws underneath the unit um, that you need to remove so we'll just do that now. So we've just got two Phillips screws that we'll um, remove Okay, so that um, just pulls off. So we've got another two screws holding this um, plate, this metal plate in place, so we'll remove those. Okay, so that um, gives us access to the battery um, by the looks of things that just pulls out. Um, before we do that, we're just going to run a test. So with the um, battery cover removed we can test the voltage of the battery in the UPS. So we've got two batteries in here and they're in um, series. So what we will expect is about 24 volts. Um, these are two 12 volt batteries. So we'll just um, pop the... So you can see that is... reading 24.3 so that's about right um, next thing we'll do is we'll just check the charge on the unit so we want to um, try and work out if the battery is at fault or if the unit's not actually charging the batteries properly okay so it's plugged into the mains now and I'll just turn it on so we had 24.3 was the last reading um, and we'll just see what it's uh, putting out when it's um, powered. So it's reading 27.5 so yep that's all good. We can conclude that the UPS is charging. The next step here is um, removing the batteries out of this unit. Um, so you can see they're two separate batteries, um, we'll pull them out and we'll just work out what replacement we can get for this unit and just see what's available on the internet. Before removing the battery I'll just take a photo of how it's all connected up in there. It's pretty simple really, you've only got a positive and negative um, lead but we'll just get a photo anyway. And once that's taken, we can look at removing this battery. So we've got two leads that connect um, the batteries to the UPS. Just move those. And we've got a little plastic tab here that you can pull on to pull that battery out. So there's a little bit of weight in that battery. So these are the batteries that I've removed from the um, UPS unit. Um, there's actually two separate 12 volt batteries um, and they're just stuck together with um, a bit of mounting tape. So just down the middle of both batteries you can see there there's just some mounting tape. Um, and I've also got the lead so they're in series uh, running from negative to positive from battery to battery and just at the end here we've just got a plastic flap um, to aid getting the battery out of the UPS so what we'll do is we'll just remove this lead, it's no longer needed 
we'll just put it on so we don't lose it and then we will remove this flap um, and then I'm just going to load test these batteries actually and just see if we get much of a voltage drop what we'll do is we'll just check um, the voltage of each individual battery so we'll just test the old um, batteries out I've already um, connected the multimeter up to one of them um, and we've got a reading there 13.29 volts um, I've already separately charged each of these batteries too just to make sure if I test this other battery here we're only getting 11.07 volts so there's something wrong with this one um, I've tried charging that as well so I'll just show you what happens when I charge it so I've got a um, car battery charger here and I've already connected up the leads to the battery so I'll just show you what happens when I turn the charger on so you can see the charge is on charging and then it will very quickly flick over the fully charged so there's some high resistance on that um, battery there so we can definitely conclude that that one's a dud at least so I've just um, connected this old car headlight up um, just for a bit of load on the battery so you can see the um, multimeter is reading 7.36 three five there so yeah it's not very good so what I'll do is I'll just see how quickly that battery comes back up so yeah it's slowly coming back up there right just testing the other battery now and you can see it's reading 12.26 volts and um, if you have a look at the light there it's a hell of a lot brighter as well so um, yeah definitely a big difference there so what I might do is mark that battery as okay and just keep that one you can see here also just um, unclipping uh, the lead to that light that the battery's um, recovering a lot faster as well okay the next step is I'm going to split um, these batteries and remove this flap here so what we'll do is we'll just remove that and we can reuse this on the next um, batteries um, I'm going to store this just on a glass and that'll um, hopefully keep okay and we'll just split these in two now we're just going to get a physical um, measurement of this battery we're going to use a um, set of vernier calipers for this so we'll just start off measuring the length of this battery so that's 152 mil get its width width is 66 and height so the height we're looking at is 95 mil lastly we're just going to get the terminal width um, so we can make sure that we Get the exact same width terminal on our replacement battery so I'll just grab that and that's six millimeters we can also um, note down the um, brand of battery and the model number um, then take this information we'll do a Google search and see if we can get the exact same battery model um, or an equivalent uh, model from a supplier Right, so we can now move on to the next step of um, sourcing a replacement battery. Right, I've done a Google search on the BB battery brand um, and the model number HR912 and I've come up with only one supplier here in New Zealand actually, so um, the battery price is quite high, um, so we're looking at $99. Um, so I've actually found an alternative model so we've got a bit of spec here that we can compare to the new battery model that I've found uh, so we've got 12 volt 8 amp hour um, we've got the dimension sizes here uh, basically bang on to what I measured with the verniers and you may recall the six millimeter um, terminal when I measured so 6.3 so it's pretty much close anyway um, we'll just go to this alternative model this is a Remco branded uh, battery 
12 volt 8.5 amp hour so we're not going backwards there we're going forward so that's okay um, the measurements are pretty much the same as what I've measured with the verniers so I measured 152 for length um, width was 66 and 95 for height that's pretty much the same the other thing just to check on this is the terminal type so uh, this is saying T2 terminal type um, so I'm just going to do a Google search to what that is okay so just doing some research on the terminal type um, I've learned something here F1 and T1 is the same thing and F2 and T2 um, are the same terminal type so if we look at F2, um, there's an illustration here, the width is 6.35, so that's close enough to our 6, so we can um, conclude that this battery here with a T2 connector uh, will work for us. So I'll put an order in for two of those, and then we'll fit them to the UPS. And with the magic of video, look what's just arrived, our batteries. Cool, so we'll just get this opened up. We've got two batteries ready to go. Great, so there's our two batteries. Next step is we're just going to um, scotch uh, tape these together with the mounting tape and then um, fit them to the UPS and leave it charging. You may remember I took a photo of the old battery setup prior to removing them. So we've got the positive and negative in the middle and our negative and positive on the outside. So what I've done is I've just basically replicated that here and I'm going to just stick the mounting tape down the middle of these two batteries, stick them together and we'll just um, mount that plastic um, flap on the back of these um, and then it's all ready to go back in. Got our tape mounted um, we'll just get this lined up and uh, stuck together um, I'm going to use a combination square for this just to make sure everything's all lined up so just get that it's pretty good now what we're going to do is just put the plastic flap back on the back of these batteries and we'll just put the lead back on in the middle great that's ready to set back up into the UPS Okay, so we've got the replacement batteries and the UPS here. We'll just get this fitted in now. We'll just fit this front plate back on. So this front metal panel is back on and we'll just get this plastic panel fitted right so that's good to go um, what we're going to do now is just plug this unit into the mains and we'll just leave it um, plugged in overnight just to make sure that battery is charged okay I've left the UPS charging overnight and I've hooked it up to a computer and it's running a game just to give it a bit of load so what I'll do now is just turn this uh, turn the power off to the UPS and just see what happens okay um, computer hasn't switched off which is a good sign 
we'll just cycle through the display here and just see what we've got so run times 59 minutes battery capacity is at 100 so um, we can conclude that the battery change has fixed the issue which is good right guys that's the end of this video thanks for watching um, hopefully you found it informative and interesting um, I've done everything I needed to do on this so it's another job out of the way um, stay tuned for the next video and please like and subscribe thanks for watching see you next time bye now